So our topic today is, yes, it's about uh, macro PK and uh, in more, if I want to go more precisely, it's micro PK on spinning objects. Uh, so micro PK or PK, maybe just a, a, a quick uh, uh, remember about what we are talking about. I just take a definition given by Farboglis and Bansol in 2015, which for me is good, is open. So it's a putative ability of organisms to affect other systems, both uh, animated or inanimate, uh, without mediation of any known physical force or energies. And I think it's it's open. So when we say when we say uh, psychokinesis. There is already uh, some kind of interpretation because you put psycho in it. So uh, at LAPDC, we prefer telekinesis, which is more open, but it's just, uh, just a problem of work. Uh, we talk about macro PK, so not micro PK, mac, uh, macro PK, not mic micro PK. So we are not talking about uh, random number generators. And we are more focused on the spinning object. So quickly about the presentation, I will make a bit of history about the research in this uh, specific uh, items. Uh, I will show some uh, example of experiment we've done uh, in semi-confined and confined uh, environment. Uh, we look at uh, what are the force involved in this kind of experiment. Uh, we look a bit deeper in thermal convictions. And we finally focus on the main topic is uh, focus on the aerodynamic force and detailed experiment we've done with that. And we make some kind of conclusion and sure with the questions. So if I come to the history, we, we have to move back to now or around the 18th. We know that uh, from 1850, there is a big wave with the spiritism and, uh, and all this, but before there was a mesmerism. And so uh, there was some early, uh, early work in, uh, in, uh, in the 80s. But uh, if we look to the, the, main, the main topics at, at that time, it was to people who are speaking about vital forces, bioforce, uh, animal magnetism. And uh, so people developed some kind of apparatus to try to uh, check or detect these kind of forces. So we can talk about uh, Hippolyte Baraduc. In uh, 1893, we developed a, tor a torsion pendulum with a needle. And when people move the hand close to the, to the glass jar, the needle was deviated. So they, they think that it was the expression of uh, the bioforce or vital force. And after, there is a more, I would say, commercial product uh, by uh, Paul Jouart, the stenometer, which you have a nice uh, jar and the needle. And the same thing, you, you look at the deviation, the angle of deviation of the, the needle to see how you are vital or not. And after there is a, a Comte de Tromelin, which was part of the Academy of Science, uh, who make a, a big work. And uh, we, was, uh, the name was Engine of Tromelin. Uh, in fact, it's, uh, it's like a cylinder of paper. Uh, you put a straw through it, and then you put a needle. And then you put the needle on, uh, you balance the needle on a coin, for example, on a bottle. And you have this kind of what you call engine, uh, because when you put your hand around, the, 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 the mobile is, is spinning in different way. And so he, he, he built and he studied a different way of uh, have the same phenomena uh, in different, uh, in different uh, you know, here it's more, in more cubical. So very, they did a very big work. And for us, for them, it was the expression of the bioforce or animal magnetism. In front of that, uh, many people have worked on the explanation, physical explanation of this phenomenon. The first was Nekayev in uh, 1816. Uh, he write a paper, the direction of light bodies caused by the heat of sun. So because in, the, uh, in, the, in some uh, spectacle, people put that in place, and he thinks that it was purely physics. So this is a, fold, a small uh, folded paper and the hand uh, closed. And he says that because the heat of the hand, there is some draft, updraft moving up. And so because the paper is fold uh, and it's, there is a disequilibrium between the different face and so it spin. 
and why it spins always in the same way? Because in, when you put your hand here, mainly the, 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 the pinwheel is running in counterclockwise. Uh, in fact, it's, it's say because you, the fingertip, the temperature at the fingertips is, uh, uh, is smaller than the temperature at the center of the, of the pole. And so it explains, so there is an updraft which is bigger at the palm. So it explains why it's running in that way. This was the first explanation. We have another explanation uh, around the Trombler motors, uh, which was uh, from uh, Barcollier in 1988. Uh, it says that uh, your body is, so here you have a, 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 a practitioner who makes his, uh, his, his front in front of a, a mobile. Uh, we just see it from above. And uh, the idea is to say that the body, the body of the practitioner, it's create a big upstream, okay? And because of this upstream, they draw, it draw on, directly on the, on the table, an horizontal uh, uh, draft of air. And so this, uh, this air, uh, air flow coming in, if you put uh, your hand as an obstacle here, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the target or the Trombler motors is running that way. So that was the explanation of uh, Mr. Uh, Barcoli. And uh, there was uh, Albert Hoffman in Germany in 1999, uh, who wrote a very big paper, so I think it's three paper, 100 pages. We, we went all, all through that uh, and uh, he works uh, and says that first he makes some some uh, some experiment using the, the the heat so heating here is the heating and he hit a cylinder here and try to run the the target here but it it was not so uh, the results were not so good but after he, he, he defined this kind of experiment so you have a, uh, it's wood, you have a two piece of wood, and when you knock this, and this wood, and you have this cylinder in metal, which is attached, uh, it, uh, when you knock regular, you make a regular knock here, you have some kind of vibration inside it. And when you put a, a target here, like the mobile of Tremblin, it's running. Uh, and uh, so he says that uh, in fact, there is an acoustic, acoustic wave, which is uh, created here. And in the same manner, he imagines that the, the pulse rate, the pulse wave of your body, uh, making some wave along the hand from the wrist to the fingertip, and then was able to make an acoustic wave in the same way running, running the, the, the motor. So, and it's why when you put the, the hand on the right, it's running that way, and on the left, you're running that way. So very interesting. We so we we decide to work strongly on it, and we make some experiment with uh, what he, he proposed, and we were able to effectively with regular knock to run this uh, target, to spin the target. But about the interpretation, we are not agree, because if we uh, we use here we put the target on a, on a metal piece which is above the piece uh, the F. Piece, the piece of the basement, and so there is no, there is no uh, link between the two, and in this case, the the mobile is not running. So in fact, it's not an acoustic wave coming from here and driving the the mobile, but it's a vibration here, which is transmitted to here, and come come back to the the, the, the mobile. So it was an important point, and uh, we also work on the. Pulse, pulse wave simulation with two loudspeakers and uh, trying to make a delay between it. And we never uh, uh, were able to run the target with this approach. And in fact, it's because we make some more uh, calculation. Uh, we are at uh, minus 10, uh, 10 minus 8 microwatt of, uh, of uh, power. And to run this, you, you need some microwatt, less. So other people work on this in 1975, uh, KMC in Czechoslovakia uh, make new psychotronic motors, which look like very much to the Tromlin motors before. You have the same approach with a needle and a cylinder. And he, he arrives at the conclusion that when you are, you are, you are above, uh, below, sorry, uh, a glass jar, 
you can you can have some movement you can't explain but they, they are very slow we have also some experiment which was done in uh, in, uh, in in the usa by martin kadin uh, he put uh, in his home a wall uh, a, 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 a globe a wall room so all the room is sealed except this window we see here and he had uh, maybe maybe 50 uh, 50 uh, targets inside it and he was looking to run how the target was running so in fact he was uh, he was uh, going uh, in another part of the house so during 30 minutes then he come back uh, along the window with no intention and he says there is no move and then when he tried he worked on his intention he was able to uh, make some move and we can hear him we have some uh, some video here six two on the bottom the small one is turning counterclockwise a big one in five one continues to turn very good turning on so he said he said in fact he's saying that this one this one was running and then after he says this one is running so he has he has make a, a wall uh, uh repertory of the i would say i would click that okay he make uh, uh, some uh, area in his on his table and all the the target are uh, have a number according to where they are placed and so when he says six two it's this one and so forth so he he make a big job uh, he make a big report more than 100 pages uh, and uh, he worked also with uh, uh, William G. Wall. Uh, so we, William G. Wall make, uh, normally get there and make some videos with him, which looks, looks like very interesting. But shamelessly, even with the archive of uh, Georgia University, we didn't uh, able to, to find these tapes. So what we have is mainly this. Uh, we saw there is a big work and uh, his conclusion was to say that uh, there is a learning curve from uh, tens of grams to 450 grams. So at, at start, he was able to, to run a, a small, a very small uh, target. And then after, uh, with the weight bigger and bigger, he says that uh, for him, uh, there is a use it or lose it uh, rules. So if he's not training, he stop, he stop his, his uh, power between comma. And uh, about the control, he says that he was sometimes able to, to stop and to reverse and so forth, but I don't see any video of that. Uh, and we have no scientific paper, so we have no really uh, detailed work on this. And uh, then we can talk about the Rhine Research Centers, uh, who published in 2014 a very interesting paper because they tried to make a correlation between some mood assessment of the practitioners and the result and uh, they work uh, during uh, 360 or 40 days and each day the practitioner was trying to run this uh, target and then in the what they call cpk the can't pk so in a sealed jar so when the success is here they try the the the, the, the sealed jar and during 98 uh, days they don't success as so a practitioner don't success to see, to run inside the seed jar but after the the 20 the 93 days she was able to run the the in the seed jar and the graphics here gives the time needed to run inside the seed jars from zero so for example here uh, we have 250 seconds so four minutes before in, uh, to be able to run the, the, the pin, the, the target. And they say that, uh, so it was very interesting because they really follow all the day, the experiment. Uh, he, we are, you have to know also that the practitioners have before uh, was uh, in, an, in a, some poltergeist event. And some, some, in some ways, this experiment helped her to try to to control what's happening. So for example, so the, the, the key point was the learning curve aspect, uh, success uh, with CPK connect with uh, jobality, confidence and surprise, because as uh, I present before, they connect each day, each day the practitioner 
was uh, passing a, a mood assessment to see how the emotion was before she worked on the PK. And so uh, the, the, they show that the role of emotion was mainly to overcome the initial resistance to the production of PK. And uh, then after there is no role, but there is no connection between uh, the, the, the results, so the time, the time delay to have PK and the emotion. Uh, after the initial period of success, so I say 98 days, they have their first success on, on Silja. They have uh, uh, a student difficulty in achieving the same uh, level. So what we call so, so very often the elusiveness, but they were able to overcome it by development of expertise and training. So it was very interesting. It's a paper which is uh, available and uh, very interesting. So that was for the story. So let's come uh, back to, to what we've done at the LPDC since uh, 2012 with uh, an, uh, um, a coordination of telekinesis practitioners. Uh, first, what uh, some exploratory experiments in the two, two modes, semi-confined and confined mode. So our main target for this uh, experiment, it's a plastic cup of 2.4 two, gram. So it's bigger than the, the small uh, fold aluminum paper, which are more at the tenth of gram. And uh, so it's uh, very easy to have. <laughs> if you need one, it's a retail shop. And uh, you, have, you could use a cork if you want with a needle. And that's it. And so we could have other target. I just put it so you have, the, you have also the weight to see how it works. For example, the Tromla motors and this kind of things you can find also in the kitchen. So you can use very easily. And other heavier target. So we can use a, a candle. So it's like the candle of, uh, for the a candle carousel, sorry. So the stem of the... And then we use, uh, they use, for example, the mold cake. So here we are at 500 grams. Or you can use also some more fun target like uh, Chinese porcelain. So I will show you some example of this exploratory experiment. So here, for example, it's, uh, let's see if it works. Do you see the video? Mm -hmm. It's okay, perfect. So here it's Pierre in uh, Canada. Uh, so the, it's, uh, the, the video is normal speed. After you have the problem of internet, but <laughs> so this is uh, the start of the spinning. So it's accelerated. I move up quick because. Okay, so and at the end, we are at the two seconds per turn. So it's really quick. And it was, I think it was in uh, 2015, we already wear masks. It was not the COVID, but it was for the experiment. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe I have not time for this. I will go this directly. So this is for the, it's a two, uh, two cake mold stacked together. So the start is uh, with the inertia is really slow. And then you are, you are going a bit quicker. Okay. And then maybe you can see another kind of experiment. This is what this one is to the objective is to stop in this case because there is all a, a light candle. It's already fire here, so it's a, there is a stream of air, so it's running. And the idea is to try to stop, in fact, stop it. Right, and then we jump directly here. Yeah. So there is two, uh, two glass containers. 
I mean, just complete. And so the, the target was still during several tens of seconds, you can see here. Okay. And when he, he stops to do it, targets coming, coming back. So this is three examples. Uh, we work also with, uh, we make some exploratory experiment also in confined mode. So here is an example with uh, two uh, target and uh, uh, three target and a uh, container and two, two were running. Is it for you? And the running during, I think it was nine, nine minutes and we have to, to cut it even outside the, the room. This one is with double glasses. Aléatoire. Donc un coup ça s'arrête, un coup ça change de sens, c'est important quand même. Le commentaire est... On a évolué oui. dans le milieu. Plein de petits euh, gadgets. Ah, ah, aussi, you have two, two double glass. <rire> mais non, mais c'est parce que c'est la lumière qui est au... Qui Target est là, is running est around, it's spinning. Mm -hmm. Moi je pense. Hein. Uh, we try also with... Uh, sorry. Uh, quick. Uh, we try also with uh, Faraday cages. And uh, we try also in making a partial vacuum. So with partial vacuum. Justement, faut repartir encore plus de droit au départ. Donc we use a pump to uh, bon extract the air. Ça tombe pas. Non. Là. Here's the pump. And the end of the experiment. Finally, the spin is running. And uh, finally, with uh, a confined mode with a heavier target. So the target, which is 2.4 gram. So it puts a glass container. This hand out, and uh, I will try to jump. I don't know exactly where it is, but uh, I think it's by here. So you have the target running slowly, but running. So our conclusion at that time, it was that uh, for light target, uh, for confined mode, we have to use light targets or we have very slow movement. And uh, with light target, it's difficult to make distinguishing between the convection aspect and the telekinesis aspect. Uh, we have a measurement problem, in fact. And so we decide to use a semi-confined environment to make this uh, study with a really physical measure. So we use a partial target isolation, so we have less physical disturbance. We measure the, the remaining physical effect, and uh, we try to have a large measure effect with a good speed of the target. So we have a better signal to news ratio. So if you look, we look at uh, what the, for the, our main objective is to look at this ratio, so abnormal disturbance slide other the physical disturbance. So it's not statistics, it's really about physical. And sorry, uh, but, and yes, no matter. And so the potential force in actions, we have uh, mechanical forces. So if we look to the mechanical forces, so we make some, some work with the same target with uh, vibration at different uh, frequencies and try to see if we are able to run in a continuous spinning the target. 
so we didn't success to it. Magnetic, I will go, re, give quickly because it's a plastic, so we, there is no, no really a subject here, but electrostatic is more important. So we, we use the gener electrostatic generators. And so if you put your hand and you follow this, this point, you can see that uh, without moving your hand, you are able to run the target. If you see the follow the hand, the blank point, half a turn, and then you come back half turn because you have the charge on one side of the target. And so when you have make 180 degrees, you are on the other side, so it come, come back. So when you are a hand, still hand, you can make a move, but only half turn. And uh, if you, because we so, we see sometimes some video on internet, if you this time try to attract it, so you are able, in fact, using your hand to, we saw that, to draw the target. Yeah. And so you are able to, to run the target with your hand, but it's, in fact, static effect, static effect. Okay, so in fact, if we uh, look to that, so there is no mechanical, no magnetics, no electrostatics. So the only effect which is remaining, remaining to study is the aerodynamic thermics uh, effect. So all which is uh, either convection current induced by thermal effect or air current airflow in the room. So if we look to the thermal convections, uh, we make a study about that. Uh, we simulate the hand by, in fact, uh, it's like a vertical plate. Uh, so there is some, uh, you can make some, uh, some calculation about that. And so you are able to define that there is what we call a velocity boundary layer. So at this place, there is no change of speed. But once you go inside it, the speed of the air is bigger. So it's explained here. So you can find this uh, layer here. And on this diagram, you have here the distance from the hand. Here you imagine the hand. So here you have a 10 centimeters, which is close to the size of the hand. And when you move up at 10 centimeters, so at the top of the hand, you are close to uh, 12 centimeters per second of speed. When you are at a little, maybe about four, four millimeters from the hand, half centimeters. And then when you are at one centimeters, you have no more effect, even at même at 1.5. So the, the effect is very close here. And so we make some experiment to, to validate that. So with this, uh, we were able to, with just an, 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 an anemometer, sorry, <laughs> with uh, just uh, foil, uh, aluminum foil paper. Uh, maybe I can show you. I don't remember exactly. Uh, uh, OK, if you go there, maybe pop, 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 pop. It's easier. So if we put the hand below this kind of target, nothing happened because it's too heavy. So it's an important point. But if you use this kind of target and you put your hand below, I'll get back. We're just trying to stay still before. Then sorry, that's not the that's not the point. Ah, okay, it was too too far. So when the hand is just below the the target, the airstream of the hand is able to turn the turbine like a turbine. Okay, when you get out the hand, the turbine is uh, is stopped. And then if you try to pee uh, along the target this time, you have to be close as we see before on the curve at half centimeters to be sure to be in the inside the, the, the zone of fitting, in fact. So if you are close, it's run. If you are not close, it's not run. 
Uh, we also try to, to use spray pan <laughs> with uh, infrared uh, measurement of temperature. Uh, we use cork, so it's good because they don't, uh, they don't burn. <laughs> And uh, we show that uh, we you can move the temperature until 120 degrees, and you don't have a real continuous run of the target. We use also gloves with uh, hot water and see what happens when we put the glove on the target. So we don't have any success about this. And we also use containers filled with hot water, so with different temperatures, so we can simulate uh, small temperature at the fingertip, for example. And uh, what we what we see finally is that uh, the main factors is more about the air flow inside the room, you deviate, than the thermic. So the thermal effect of the end creates, yes, updraft, but uh, if you are located uh, at more than two centimeters of the target, or above the target, there is no effect. And uh, very often, the air movement inside the room are more uh, important uh, when you put some obstacle around to create this uh, effect than the thermic. So we have to go on the aerodynamics. So aerodynamics, so it's how we can uh, say if uh, the, the target is running because of airflow around or not. So the idea here it was to use a PIV technique, so particle image velocimetry. Uh, so the idea is to you have a, we use a smoke, smoke uh, here, and we have particles of smoke, and these particles of smoke are illuminated by a laser. So you are able to see and follow the move of this particle. So this this is the idea. So here is a, a boot like a telephone boots. So it's a semi-confined environment. So we have not too much disturbance. And inside the, this cabin, we have so the, the, the stair where the, the, the chair, where the practitioner is, uh, is working. There's a table. Here is the target. We have the smoke generators. We are able to generate smoke. And here, the laser, laser is illuminated a thin, a thin layer of smoke. So you can see directly the flow with the target and then the camera here above is able to see the hand the target and the flow of smoke around so the idea is to say how we can then make the calculation of all the the, the flow so the, the principle is to see that we make some uh, uh, imaging uh, computing and so we are able to compute between two images the this displacement of the patterns and because it's 50 image per second we have the we have the speed and uh, we represent the speed by the vectors with the direction and the strength of the vectors the speed uh, is, is is big so here we have the flow of the of the air around the target and here we have the speed of the air on the target so our first experiment in 2016-17, we make three categories of experiments that we wanted to compare. The first one was to pushing the air through a hose and move the target. So air generated, so it was, we call that A experiment, airflow as a driver. Then we use a motor driven. So we have a, a electric motors with a flattened uh, needle, which is able to uh, draw the, the spin of the target. So this is the motor which is driving the, the, the target. And then the third category is when you have a practitioner, the te telekinesis practitioners, trying to run the target with his hand without, without touching it. And the idea for compare the three categories of experiment is to use the ratio dome speed, so target speed, uh, divided by the, the, the speed of the airflow around. Okay. And so here we have the result. So this is an A experiment, airflow experiment, motor experiment, and we have four for telekinesis. We have the airflow speed and the mobile speed in millimeter per second and the ratio. So what we look here, it's ratio one, which is here. 
And what we have below the, the one is the airflow experiment, which is normal because you need to have a, a flow which go quicker than the target because you have a part of energy between the flow and the target. So the target can't run quicker than the flow. Okay. Motor experiment, normal, because it was the motor which was driving the target. So the, the flow around the target go uh, less quick. And, and what is interesting to see the, the telekinesis experiment, when we have four experiments, and one is at two ratio, or two are two ratio, and one is at eight ratio. So in this case, we have a, a, a target which is running eight times faster than the uh, than the airflow around. Then we designed a new experiment in uh, 2018, 2019 uh, with a different objective. Our first objective is to evaluate the minimal airflow speed required to start the target and compare it with uh, the, the start speed using by a uh, a picker, uh, a practitioner of telekinesis. We wanted to improve the signal to noise ratio because, for example, the smoke generation in the big booths uh, is uh, creates some noise. And uh, we wanted also that uh, we can multiply the experiment and that the experiment could be in a, in a nice environment for the practitioners. So we connected to the aspect of mood. And uh, the idea is to develop. Uh, Portable, uh, a portable uh, bench. So the first thing we use a new target, more standard, would say. So it's heavier first. So it's three stacked uh, cup, and we use a standard stem for the for the for the, the stem. And then uh, we use a portable bench, which which is in fact composed of a, a plexiglass box with a lid. Inside this lid, there is a rectangular opening, so you can see the target. And inside the box, we put some uh, uh, some uh, incense sticks to make the smoke generation. So there is no machinery; it's very smooth, and it's more confined than before. And we use a laser, which is able to to illuminate in horizontal or vertical mode, and the camera. And this is easily uh, uh, build buildable. So it could use directly in the in the home environment of the practitioners, and so we make some experiments. So there is many experiments, but some have done after with a multi camera. So, for example, you can see how it works. Uh, you have here the what see the camera above, and you have the position of the end, the flow and the target and uh, here it's not moving so there you can see in the vertical speed it's moving faster and faster okay so that was one of, of experiment with the three uh, cup and uh, another one we have different target. So it's a Chinese ball. So it's a bit long to balance. So there is more inertia. So it's harder to, to start. And then you can see maybe here. You can see the mobile running. Okay. So the point is about uh, the, the position of the end and the box that all the precedent explanation don't apply because all this explanation needs the hands to be close to the to the target. And we are above the target this time. So what we use for this experiment, we have reference experiment. 
uh, which are done with our old uh, boot, where we use pump, and we try to see the minimal uh, speed requirement to start the spin of the target. Okay, and then the PKR experiment using well, the portal bench you, you just see, and we compare the 10 first second of movement in the two kind of experiment. And the comparison we use. Uh, we use here the mean airflow velocity magnitude. So we take an area along the plastic dome and we look at uh, the average speed on this part, on magnitude. And then we complement by calculating, uh, we take concentric cycle around the target and we calculate the tangential speed on this circle. Sorry. Sorry. And we make the curve looking from uh, the surface along the radius, the evolution of this speed. And we compare this kind of speed on the two experiments. So here are the results. So you have the, the result speed. So for example, here at the top, it's a reference experiment. So the, the experiment which is done with a pump, an air pump generating the airflow. And here, uh, sorry. And here is the experiment with the practitioners, taking these practitioners. Uh, so you see that immediately because it's the same scale, so that the vectors, the vectors are not the same here and here. They are really bigger here. Uh, if we look to the magnitude, here we have a 31 millimeter per second average speed here. And in this other experiment with airflow generated, we have a 30, 23 meter per second. And uh, for the two experiments with uh, telekinesis, uh, telekinesis practitioners, we have a 2.4 and 2.7. So we have a ratio of nine between the, the smaller speed here and the average speed here. And then if we compare the speed, so the tangential speed, along the circle. Here is the experiment with the telekinesis practitioners. And here are the experiment with the airflow. So if we compute the difference between this, this one, the minimal, and this one, we have a ratio of 10. So, but you can say that, okay, we saw this, it's interesting, but it's in, in, the, in the horizontal plan. What happened in other horizontal plan? And the, the, the key point here is to, to look if we are in a turbulent mode or not. Because if we are in turbulent mode, you can have very big difference between different plans. But if you are not in turbulent flow, normally there is no shear of the flow and you have speed are close from one plan to another. Uh, so we just compute uh, knowing the speed of the, of, the, of the air flows and the diameters of our, our, our target. We compute the Reynolds number. And uh, we have a Reynolds number, which is at, at most at uh, 900, 970. And the threshold for turbulent flow is 2,400. So we are very far from a turbulent flow. So normally, there is no shear of the flow inside this mechanics. But we wanted to, to go further and really make a vertical speed analysis. So we use the vertical approach for our PAV. So the laser is in vertical. And we make the computation of uh, the speed on the vertical side. And so we see that uh, we are in 2.7 millimeter per second and 3.2. So we are very close to the one we have in the horizontal flow, which was 2.4 and 2.7. And so we, we can say that, in fact, uh, the, the speed of the flow is very low compared to the speed in the air flow generated. And also to have an a more visual approach of the things. We can uh, compare on this video. I will show you 20, the 20 seconds of the start. Uh, compare between the start of uh, with an airflow generated and the start with uh, telekinesis. So you see here, it's already speed, uh, a speed largely bigger. Even if the flow here is really smaller than this one.
So we can just, because it's quick. So you see the, the movement here is very low. And finally, we make an artifact experiment. So we try to simulate uh, the, the hand with, uh, so here is the target, here is a plastic box, and this is a uh, um, glass with hot water to simulate the hand. And we have a big, uh, a big glass jar with very hot water to simulate the upper uh, body. And we try to, to make move of the target with this uh, apparatus and we are not able to do it. So in fact, in all these experiments, we have more than 500 experiments. Uh, what we, uh, so what we call so exploratory experiment, because what we call experiment, exploratory experiment is one uh, practitioners trying to run a target and making a video control. So sure, it's not lab control, but it's exploratory. So we can multiply experiment People are in their, in their environment, uh, so it's very important. And so we have, you can see that on, on our, our YouTube uh, channel, uh, we have uh, make available many experiments from 2012. And so you can see that there is very many things which are explored. Uh, we make also a series of lab experiments. So it's, uh, I think it's about 40, uh, 40 lab experiments uh, with all the PV methodology. So we are able to control the flow. Uh, we are able to, if you, there is some fraud, it's easy to see because uh, if something is, is making, for example, is, uh, is uh, throwing air on the systems, you already see directly that the airflow is moving. You have all the control of what is happening around. And so we make some publications that uh, you can find uh, in, the, in the link uh, after. So today we have no explanation, uh, direct explanation of the target spin. Uh, the, the air current, which was uh, the main explanation, uh, can't be because uh, it's uh, 10 times factors between the airflow and, and the, the target. Uh, so the other point also interesting, sorry, uh, is the fact that uh, because some people, when we work on that, some people think that maybe the telekinesis practitioner was somewhere running the air and the air was running the target. Uh, in fact, this experiment shows that uh, it's not the target, the, the air which is running the target. So even if we accept that there is a telekinesis uh, hypothesis, he is not using the air to run the target. The target is running directly. So that's also interesting. So we have a potential macro PK with semi repeatability because we have many experiments and we are able to repeat it. And, uh, but it's uh, in a very low range of energy. We have to, to say that because if you look to the energy which is in place, so around the micronewton, I would say, and the microjoule and the microwatt. So the characteristics, sorry, just look at the time. Okay. Uh, the main characteristics that we find about uh, this experiment, uh, some people have better skill. So there are some gifted people, like in tennis, like in music, uh, Okay, uh, the learning curve for weight of target and distance increased because it was very interesting because what, what, what I show you from the uh, Martin uh, in America, Martin Kaidin, who says that he has the learning curve on the weight. We discover his paper and so forth far, far um, later than what we've done the same here. And we arrive also at 500 grams about our mold. <laughs> So it's, it's interesting because if it was only in our mind, why the same number? Uh, so we have some plateau effect. So in fact, uh, above the 500 uh, gram of the big mold, we have difficulty to, to move up. There is some distance uh, impact. Uh, we are agree with, the, with the, the walls, use it or lose it. Uh, we are agree also with the, mood influence, the fact that if you are uh, in confidence, if you are in curiosity approach, uh, it's better. 
and we we will add that uh, no, no attachment to the result let go so typically uh, uh, the telekinesis is start the, the move start and if it's too attached he will he will see the move and say wow and the, the move is stop so you have to let go at that time uh, there is a confinement impact clearly we, we are not able to run at the same speed uh, inside the glass jar and outside and semi replayability because it's not repeat, complete replayability because someday nothing happened, as you all know. Uh, so is this the same phenomenon that we are speaking about between uh, uh, micro PK, so random number generators, uh, the one we are speaking about, the small micro PK, I would say, so we are looking at uh, one to 100 micronewton, uh, and the events that uh, was in poltergeist or physical medium ships uh, or metal bending, for example, the one which were controlled in scientific mode. Uh, so we don't know. Is it the same phenomenon? We don't know. And that's uh, that's a big question uh, that uh, we want to work on it. It's why also we, we work around poltergeist and so forth to, to really see what, what was the, the, the condition of happening and uh, in very detailed way, what was the physical event. And uh, we continue to work on the, I would say the intention or control impact. So are we really able to, to decide of the spin, of the direction of the spin? Are we able to stop and start the, the target and how? Uh, the distance impact. So when we are close, we know that when we move outside the end, uh, the, the effect decreased. But we also have some success, which has to be validated at some distance through internet. And so we are working on that to see if we are able to reproduce something in more lab environment. And uh, also, we are working, we, you see that we make some fir first experiment in uh, on vacuum, but we want to go uh, deeper on it with a real measure of the pressure inside. And uh, so we are working on that. And also the effect of the systems. I see that uh, Walter or Lucadou is here and uh, I'm happy to, to have him here. And uh, so the system, the impact of the system uh, on, on, the, on globally the, the effect. So thank you very much for your attention.